should not be left to the youth to figure out. This is a whole world issue. It is time to bridge the divide between generations. Communities must come together to realize that humans have a moral obligation not only to ourselves and our future children, but to every animal and wild place we have destroyed through unethical and destructive actions. We must treat climate change as the emergency that it is because by each passing day, our situation becomes more dire. We as young people demand a future. We will not stand by as our world is destroyed around us. Today we march for action. not apathy, for solutions, not shame, and for our planet, not profit. Today we march because we demand answers to rising sea levels, loss of species, and climate refugees. Today we march for our future. Carbon emissions must be cut, clean energy must be cultivated, and fossil fuels must be forgotten. We must do the seemingly impossible because time is truly running out. This is why I urge you to take steps towards a green future. We must decide between greed at the expense of our planet and sustainable practices for our country. And finally, between what is right and what is not. 
It is within our grasp to change the way we move forward. We have the capacity to fight against business as usual. I commit myself to this issue. I pledge to make drastic change in my life as well as small incremental changes that can and should be turned into habit. There can be no doubt that this is a moment of truth. We no longer have the luxury of time. We are facing a decision of life or death. Yes, we march today, but we cannot let ourselves stop here. We must continue the fight. Call your legislator, use your voice, let your vote forego a path and help us lead a way in the fight against climate change. We are not, oh God, we're not here for attention. We're not here to prove a point or fulfill a need for rebellion. We are here because we want to live past 50. We are here because if we aren't pushing for it, no one will. Everyone is needed. This is not political anymore. This is an issue of convenience or an exaggeration. This is a matter of survival, and we have no choice but to fight back. representative for um, Hardwick, Standard, all of us. Chip. Wow, this is, this is awesome. This is really fantastic. So I can't tell you enough about how important this day is and how important it is for me to see all of you here today. Because you are our future. You need to team with old guys like me and make the changes. Because I'm ready, and now you're ready. And when you vote, vote for this principle. Clean air, clean water, healthy living, clean waterways and lakes, and warm homes. So what have we done in Vermont? In, in, in light of the rollbacks, of federal regulations that have been put in place for years. What are we doing here in Vermont? Well, I'll start with July 2020. There will be no more plastic bags handed to you at the register. <laughs> Styrofoam containers and cups when you buy your food and coffee. Because plastic and styrofoam never go away. They stay in your landfill forever. So that's something that we have already put in place. What else are we doing? We pay attention to carbon footprint as far as of weatherization of our homes. So this year Vermont put well, millions of dollars into weatherization, coupled with millions of dollars coming from the federal government. What, how does this happen? When I sit in a General Housing and Military Affairs Committee and I, we take testimony from senior citizens who tell us after their home was weatherized that they can take one of their sweaters off. That's the kind of living. That's the kind of future that we need to look at, that you need to look at. We need to take care of everyone in the state and make sure they're good and healthy and comfortable. What else are we doing? Transportation. Electric cars are questionably viable up here, but it's happening. Technology is improving. The state of Vermont is incentivizing those in places where they can uh, use electric vehicles to, to uh, purchase electric vehicles. So we put in that we put that in place. Um, also, e-bikes will be part of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone who has one say they're great. I guess. <laughs> so uh, okay. So the other piece is that building technology is advancing 
um, at a at a huge at a, at a at an amazing rate of speed. So what do we need to do? We need to have our tech centers be able to train new builders so that they know what they're doing, so that they know how to uh, build a home that's energy efficient, that's comfortable, and that burns less fossil fuels. The state of Vermont is committed to keep a zero, <coughs> um, a zero energy policy by 2050. But here's something you can do. Our governor has talked about this, but he has not been a leader in this. So what you all need to do is call the governor's office and let them know that you want him to lead on climate change. You want him to lead on energy efficiency. You want him to lead on all measures connected with our global economy. So then we, I had a, we had a meeting yesterday, um, a climate caucus, and I participated by phone. And we started to talk about food. And all of a sudden it occurred to me that we live in a place that has been exceptional as far as food, local food production, the, the Vermont Center for Agricultural Economy, processing food that's sent to local nursing homes, schools, and hospitals. That is what we need to do. That is what, how we can change things. We use our local produce to, to ship or to, uh, to uh, send to uh, these places that need and use this food. <laughs> Let me leave you with this thought. When you go into the job market, we are going to see more green jobs than we are other types of work. So it's very important that you keep the work here, keep doing this, learn whatever you can because green jobs are our future here in Vermont, food is our future here in Vermont, you are our future here in Vermont. Clean water, clean air, clean energy, that is what we need. What's that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so ready. I'm heading to Burlington from here for a pollinator event. I sponsored a, a bill to protect our pollinators to take poisonous pesticides off the shelves of our hardware stores. being asked to continue the fight on that, and I will. So thanks very much for all you being here. It is absolutely encouraging for me to stand here in face of all these young people and some of the older folks as well, <laughs> but to know that we are taking this in hand and we are letting our position known, to be known that we are not going to stand for this, that we are going to fight back, and you, you, our future, need to be part of this. Thank you very much. The energy here is amazing. We are here because we care about the world we live in. We are here because we care about the climate of the earth. We are here because we believe our words and actions can make a difference. Thank you, Chip, for talking about the politics and what's happening in our state and all the great work that you do. I'm here to talk about the things that we can do as individuals in our community. And a lot of you are here and you might know some of these things already, but let's all think about what we can do more. You came here because you believe change is needed, and you can decide ahead what actions you want to take to make a change. And small actions do add up to quite a bit more. So I encourage you today to think about what else you can do and make some decisions about that. And then set yourself up for success. Set some goals, set yourself up for success, make decisions, be prepared to make it easy. Here are some facts for you. One. I know that Vermont has done great strides in reducing plastic bags um, starting next year, but between now and then, the average American uses 365 plastic bags every year. If everyone here makes a commitment to not do that, we could save 72,000 plastic bags between now and July when we're not allowed to anymore. Another thing is, one million water bottles, plastic water bottles, not in reusable containers, are sold every minute around the world. If we decide now, all of us here, to not use those plastic water bottles, we can make a difference in our town and our community. 
Another thing you can do is bring utensils with you. So when you're out getting food, you don't have to take plastic ones. You can yeah, just same too. Make bring your straws with you. Don't use plastic ones. <laughs> Girl. Right. And you can think about when you buy things. What are you buying? Can you use less packaging? Can you buy in bulk? Um, I know the co-op has made some changes because of requests from members in our community. We now have bulk shampoo and bulk soap and things like that coming from direct requests from everybody here in this community. And so do more of that. Speak up. Yes, at the co-op, we're open with open ears, ready to listen, ready to make changes. But other places will be, too, if we speak up as individuals, as groups within the community. And keep your dollars local. When you buy online, you're putting money into transportation costs. And depending on where you're buying from, it's going to somewhere else not in this state. It's not going into our community. Keep your dollars local, right here. Suggestions. If you're not doing those already, or some of them, think about what you can change. Think about that right now. Make a commitment inside yourself to this group. And if we all make those little commitments to change, we can all make a great big difference in our community. And when you think about that, if you're doing some, think about what more you can do. And continue to ask yourself that. How can we help each other more and be a stronger community? Studies show that when we as individuals make a conscious change, the people around us are more, my, more likely to make a similar positive change. Together, through our actions and our words, we can make a difference. I'd like you to think about four facts. Forty years ago, a Democratic president, Jimmy Carter, put solar panels on the White House. <laughs> Two years later, a Republican president took them off. In, in 2016, a Democratic president signed on to the Paris Climate Accord with 175 other nations. One year, one year later, a Republican president took us out of it. <laughs> Obama passed environmental laws, stricter environmental laws, such as tapping me methane at the wellheads. <laughs> Trump has already obliterated those environmental regulations and is continuing to do it. Four, Obama allowed California and 12 other states to enact emission standard regulations that were stricter than federal law. The Lion King, and I mean L-Y-I-N apostrophe, is removing those. Do you see the pattern here? To achieve lasting and real climate action, we need to support candidates for state and federal elections in other states. Vermont is doing well, but in other states that control the White House and the Congress. We need legislators that believe in the climate crisis and will not block effective le legislation. The time is now to create a Congress in Washington 
that will act in your benefit, in my grandchildren's benefit, and in their grandchildren's benefit. We are, do not own the earth. We are stewards of the earth. <laughs> to learn how you can take local action, meaningful action, to help elect such candidates in other states outside of Vermont, please join me this Sunday at 5 p.m. sharp in Fellowship Hall at the United Church of Christ in Greensboro. We must prevail. We cannot fail. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have one last speaker, my dad, dad. All right, you guys are awesome. This is so great. And we're standing under our new pavilion. Yeah. So I hope we spend a lot more time together under this pavilion because I think that's actually part of the solution here. Yeah. I don't think that anybody here needs to be educated as to uh, what the issue is and the, the degree of uh, concern that it raises. And I think today we are turning out to, uh, to, to make our voices heard together as a community, nationally, internationally to policy make makers, and it's awesome to have Chip here and have Chip represent our community. But I think at the end of the day, uh, it's not going to be the policy makers or the regulators or uh, the bureaucrats that are gonna fix this problem for us. We gotta keep pulling on those levers and working them for everything we've got. But at the end of the day, really I think what everybody here, if you want what you want, you're talking about system change. Okay, you're not talking about modest reforms on the edges of these things. Okay, fuel efficiency standards alone are not gonna shift the balance. We need to fundamentally revisit the, the assumptions that bring us together around the, issue, the things that have created the condition that we're in right now. You might have heard the analogy used before, but if you walk into a room that's flooding, right, what's the first thing you're gonna do? Are you gonna start arguing over whether to use mops or rags? Or you can start looking for the faucet. You know, we need to go back to the fundamentals and start looking for the, the, the mechanisms that are creating these situations. And they're not simple. They're not just about curbing a certain technology or increasing efficiency. Those are all important things. We need to keep doing those things. But we have a market system that drives this course of action and puts us in the position that we are in right now. <laughs> And, and we, need to re, we need to rebuild a society in the image of an ecosystem, in the image of diversity and strength and decentralization. And we need to reclaim what our shared goals and values are so that as we do our daily work as a community together, as we gather under this pavilion, that we know everything we do is connected to our long-term goals, our long-term outcomes. Right? These are not the small things, these are the big things. The little things are the big things. Our relationships are key. The whole framework that brought us to where we are right now pivots on a couple cultural assumptions which are basically rooted in the idea of exploitation of the commodification of life and the separateness of beings, right? We can boil it all down to those two things. If we keep fe feeling separate, we're never going to get there. If there are Confederate flags flying in this town, we will not stop global warming. Okay, let's put it all into one umbrella. So let's work on taxation and let's work on legislation and let's work on those other levers that we have, but I think what we have already in this community is a special thing. And I think what we need to do is deepen our resolve. I think it's an easier feat to go net neutral as a community than to try to figure that out on the national stage. So we can, we can be shouting to Washington, we can be shouting to the international policy community, but right here, this is where our power is, and this is where we can actually affect change in the easiest way. What, 
what we're talking about is not just talking about it, right? We're, we're talking about a radical re-inhabiting of our communities. That means like action by way of getting on the school board and realigning the schools. That means being on your municipal boards. That means showing up for these demos. It means you know, figuring out how we can in our individual operations, on our farms, in our stores, in our organizations, you know, increasingly take responsibility for the situation that we find ourselves and create alignment. So the awesome and affirming thing is that we have so much strength as a community already. There's a reason that I've lived here nearly 20 years and brought my children up here because I love this place and I, I am so empowered by the, our collective capacity. And I think we need to keep deepening that. So while we can call on legislators today and we can keep supporting Chip as he, he works on our behalf at the State House, let's make today a call of action to ourselves. Let's make today a call of action to, to really to, to deepen our resolve together, to stop using Amazon, to, to start supporting each other. And let's continue to organize around our shared goals and values. So you guys rock, I love you, thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone that needs to be up for fourth period, leave now. Um, I'd just like to conclude by saying thank you again. Um, it's really wonderful that all of you students walked out and made this decision along with all of you community members, thank you so much for that. Um, have a wonderful day.